The circle starts with solid support and a smile. This is real life. With its ups and its downs, this is going the extra mile. And the feeling you get when you can help someone along their journey. Through the twists and turns, we're here. This is Western Union, making sure your support reaches its destination. This is Western Union, moving money for better. Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs, electrical and household appliances, clothing, cell phones and accessories, and much, much more. Pio's Pizza Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit, no me know the secret. I'm like, oh, you know the secret? Everybody, Everybody know, know the secret. secret. <laughs> Excellent Creole dishes. Fresh bread and pastries. Yes, breakfast and lunch available fresh Mondays through Fridays. We open 7 a.m. Delivery available. Wholesale breads and pastries available soon. Call 219-5003. With three locations. Lot 5 to Ennis Street, Sophia. 36 Durban Street, GPO Building. Dion's Delight Catering Service. We cater for all occasions. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. Good evening and welcome to MTV News Update for today, Friday, March 16, 2018. In the news tonight, family of Kwame Asana does not believe the police's version of the seawall shooting. Opposition blasts government for not establishing a sovereign wealth fund as yet. GWI condemns attack on its employees by aggressive Buxtonian. And in court, a man denied bail after allegedly being caught trafficking cannabis. With the details of these and other stories, I am Ashley Scotland. Thank you for joining us. Now for the news and details. Family members of Kwame Asana are contending that the Guyana police force needs to come clean following his demise on Thursday afternoon. Asana, along with two others who the police claimed was about to commit a robbery, were shot dead on Thursday, March 15. Nicole John, who opens tonight's newscast. The Guyana police force claims that the three dead men all have criminal records. However, Asana's wife claims that her husband has no criminal record. The woman said her husband left for work on Thursday morning because he was a debit collector at Courts, Guyana. While at work, she began to call his phone to pick up their son from school. However, after five phone calls, she was informed of his death by a police officer. The woman said she was invited to the Criminal Investigations Department where the ordeal was relayed to her. Please check his record. Look into how and why he was murdered yesterday. Please check it out. Really do your investigation properly. We need a complete inquiry as to how and why he died. 
sister of the deceased also related that her brother was not a part of any criminal enterprise. The woman said the Ghana police force has to get their facts right first before putting out information in the public domain. The police should be, you know, there to protect us. Then that that's that that that's clearly out the door now with us because that's that's not true. They're not there to protect, they're just there to me. I see it as though they're just there to shoot and kill without asking questions. And that's not what a police officer would do. You do your investigation, you gather your evidence, and then you you do what you're supposed to do. Nobody's stopping you from doing whatever it is that you got to do, but you just need to do a complete and a proper investigation first before you pull the trigger and take someone's life. Brother of the deceased, Lawrence Asana said, when detectives began to relate what took place on Thursday, he was not buying their version of the story. The man said if his brother was involved in those kinds of activities, then he would have known because the two are very close. The only thing he get on Kwame is that his name is Kwame and he's from Buxton. Okay. And he said when he get that, he made a call to a well-known person, three well-known persons from Buxton and said and asked them about tell for them to give him information on Kwame. He said after 10 minutes waiting, he get no answer. And that is when he went and talked to his department the public relations department mm -hmm. and he said he did not give no such information to his public relations department that Kwame was arrested on several occasions. So we we saying why the inconsistency? Who are feeding the media with these lies? Everything that they thus far, everything that they post on media about Kwame lies. We are not here to tell we are not we're not saying that the police uh, we're not bombarding them. You have to do your work, but do it properly. If there are facts, yes, present the facts, but don't present things that are not facts. Don't present false, give false information. You're tarnishing his, his character. You're tarnishing his name, more so the Asana's name. The Ghana police force is claiming that the three men were trailing a customer who exited Scotia Bank. However, Little that the alleged trunkers did not realize was that there was an unmarked police vehicle also trailing them. The police's statement said the bank customer parked the vehicle. However, the men exited their vehicle while one of them brandished a small firearm at the said customer. That was when the police said the exchange of gunfire began which left the three alleged trunkers dead. The two others have been identified as 46-year-old Dexroy Curtis of Grove East Bank Demerara and 57-year-old Errol Adams of Dartmouth, Essequibo Coast and Buxton, East Coast Demerara. The police also retrieved a 9mm pistol along with a magazine containing seven live rungs and four spen shells next to the body of Curtis. In addition, the police claims that in the vehicle Sana was driving, they found one driver's license, 10 passports belonging to himself and family members, a key used by trunkers, two handcuff keys, a bandana and clothing. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Minister of Finance Winston Jordan had claimed that government has been making efforts since 2016 to establish a sovereign wealth fund to store oil revenues. However, that fund has not been established and the opposition party, frankly, has had it with excuses which led to its leader raining a hail of criticism on the government. Let's hear more from Sandy Ramatar. Opposition leader Bar Jagdio believes there has been no clear management framework for the oil and gas sector. He also reiterated the importance for the establishment of a sovereign wealth fund as it is essential to the future prosperity of the nation. Noting that the sovereign wealth fund is just one aspect under the management framework, Jagdio says other subjects need to be undertaken. Well, I'm not without the sovereign wealth fund and the clarity around the sovereign wealth fund. We can have billions of dollars of flows. It doesn't mean anything unless you tell people what it's going to be used for, how it's going to be used in a nonpartisan manner, etc. 
but they have big issues with that very thin skin. And then they love to make excuses. It's everyone else's uh, fault. Minister of Finance, Winston Jordan, had pointed out that the establishment of the fund is a priority of the government. Jordan says in developing the draft legislation, support will come from the Commonwealth Secretariat. A green paper on the subject is expected to be published this year with subsequent consultations. In addition to this, the legislation is expected to be laid in Parliament before the end of the year. This will allow the government to establish the Sovereign Wealth Fund. The fund is to govern the use of the petroleum resources. The framework will guide in the prudent management of future oil revenues for the benefit of future generations. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. The Guyana Water Incorporated has condemned the attack of its workers in Buxton on Thursday afternoon. One of its vehicles was set ablaze by a resident while the team was making a disconnection. Here is more from Nikhil Jondo. Managing Director of the Guyana Water Incorporated, Dr. Vanwes Charles, says Thursday's incident has become a grave concern of the company. He noted that two teams, namely the connection and disconnection were in the village of Buxton East Coast Demerara conducting exercises. Dr. Van West Charles said the team encountered a rogue customer on Wednesday. However, the team returned on Thursday to carry out the disconnection to the customer's pipeline. However, they were again met with aggression. While carrying out their work, um, an individual was seen on the other side of Company Road and as the crew completed the work the individual moved towards the bus and started spraying a liquid onto the bus from a soda bottle and the liquid basically was gasoline. He began throwing the contents into the vehicle also and then lit his cigarette lighter and set ablaze the vehicle. The crew members had to find their escape as quickly as possible. And I think um, it is a good thing that they were safe, but the vehicle has been severely damaged to the point that it has to be uh, written off. Dr. Farnes Charles says these kinds of acts will not stop the company from carrying out their mandate across the country. He noted that there have been repeated attacks towards its workers in the past, which cannot be tolerated. The managing director said GWI is trying to improve the delivery of potable water to every citizen. All of our citizens must stand up against this type of lawlessness in our country. This cannot be tolerated and therefore GWI in its quest has to continue to disconnect, has to continue to get into the villages to be able to conduct repairs of leaks, etc. But it has to be in partnership with the community. We do know that this is not representative of the people of Buxton and in the main is not very representative of the people in all of the communities. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. More news to the head. Do stay tuned. At Optic Vision Care, we value the power of your sight. And with our team of eye care professionals, you'll be in good hands. Come experience our comprehensive eye examination using state-of-the-art technology and specialized diagnostic equipment at four convenient locations. In Mahaika, Grove, Giftland Mall, and East Street. At Optique, we care, you see. Call us today, 227-7744. What good is history if you never change? And what good is change if it doesn't make you better?
Valvoline. For the last 150 years, we've been doing just that. Relentlessly pursuing innovation for your engine. Backed up not just by science, but by the hands-on expertise that drives everything we do. Valvoline, 150 years under the hood. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Pritas Fashions. For all of your exclusive Indian wear, check us out at Pritas Fashions at 183 Bar Street, Kitty. We have a wide variety of shalwars, gararas, saris, three-piece quarter suits, bridal wear, children outfits, and accessories for all occasions. Pritas Fashions, located at 183 Bar Street, Kitty. Contact us on telephone number 227-8644. That's Pretis Fashions. You're still with News Update. Welcome back. The People's Progressive Party is claiming that mounting cries are emanating from communities as they are concerned with the direction in which the country is heading. Find out more in this Tani Ramatar report. Citizens are concerned about the direction in which the country is heading since the coalition took office in 2015, alleges General Secretary of the PPP, Bar Jagdiu. He claims that is a general feedback given to him from his many visits to different parts of the country, specifically Region 3. Concerns were raised on citizens' welfare, security, cost of living and investment in the country. And for them... It seems as though, and these came out from the comments at the meeting, that there is a reduction in security, that safety, increase in crime, that people are rapidly losing jobs and that there are no prospects for more jobs in the future because investments are drying up. They're worried about the daily reports of large-scale corruption taking place in the government. He also lambasted the government for not readily interacting with citizens on the ground. Jagdi also alleged that certain policies are being implemented to harm the poor. It is trapped in the, the policies that they build, uh, and I don't mean literal policies, but the policies of privileges that they have built since they got into office. High, high salaries, Tons of people around them, fleets of vehicles, security, personal assistance, perks, um, conferences and dinners at Marriott, etc. Uh, at the Marriott Hotel, and they're trapped in that, and they're forgotten that there are large group of people out there who need to to have their concerns heard. The opposition leader has over time been partaken in a number of community visits, listening to Christ, the voice of the citizens. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. City Hall is apparently moving in slow motion as no place has been found as yet to house vendors of Starbrook Wharf to facilitate its reconstruction. City Hall claimed to have been searching for places since 2016. Yanis Abrams with the details. The Mayor and City Council is still to decide the location vendors will be placed to facilitate the renovation of the Starbuck Market Wharf. Chairman of the Markets and Public Health Committee, Lionel Jaikaran, stated that due to the lack of cooperation from the town clerk, Roy King, the removal of the vendors has been unnecessarily delayed. King in rebuttal affirmed that the street vending policy should not be confused with the relocation of vendors. The mayor, Patricia Chase Green, further said the committee should not place the responsibility on the administration. It is our responsibility to look and we are coming at a crucial time where we have to do some relocation. You are aware that the Ministry of Public Infrastructure since last year has indicated to us they will start some work on the reconstruction or repairs of the Starbuck Market Wharf. 
and to wait at this time now to ask the town clerk. It is the duty and responsibility of the committee to walk, look at open spaces, look at areas, meet, consult if you have, if you have to look at, if you have, we're under, we're under um, announcements, if you have to identify maybe the closure of a street or two streets where we can have this, it's because it is for an interim while the wharf is, is completed. Further, Councillor Andrew Marx mentioned being a part of the committee, she gives several recommendations to the, to the chairman on where vendors can be placed. Councillor Heston Bostwick also gave his take on the issue. And in my attendance to the markets committee meetings, if now I don't get notices to attend anymore. What we had proposed to use here these gun car parkers, we had proposed to use to convert Lamar's um, Lambert Street to a one way and use the site where the corner bank is. And there were other proposals of other places that were identified. There were tours of which I went on. And what was the decision in my absence of those other meetings? I know not. But I know there are places that were identified in my presence when the market was on visit, the market committee was on visit to identify those places. They were identified. I can even recall the deputy mayor then, current deputy mayor, then took a decision to write the Honorable Minister of Public Infrastructure to get some more assistance with regards to the area around the, uh, the uh, where was the old stelling. The city council has been looking for temporary spots to place vendors since 2016 to facilitate the reconstruction of the Starbrook Wharf. The project will be executed by the Ministry of Public Infrastructure. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. Councillor Sherrod Duncan will write to both the Local Government Commission and the Minister of Communities to inquire about the manner in which the No Confidence motion was shot down. Duncan had filed a motion against the town clerk Royston King for his alleged unbecoming behaviour as a town clerk. Here is more from Yanis Abrams. Former Deputy Mayor Sherrod Duncan, during an exclusive interview with News Update, stated that he will write to the Local Government Commission and the Minister of Communities, Ronald Bulkan, to query the expulsion of the No Confidence motion against the town clerk, Royston King. Duncan had filed a motion in the light of King's action regarding the Bel Air ground scandal, the parking meter debacle, along with finances which cannot be accounted for. They have not ruled out um, legal actions in terms of going to the court. Uh, because again, I see it as a, as a very flawed system where the town clerk um, has, has said that a motion is valid and he has placed it on the order paper. He has placed it on the agenda for discussion. And then the very town clerk brings a, brings a legal opinion that is accepted before the motion is ventilated in council and the legal opinion is accepted. So I see that as a very flawed system among, very, uh, uh, among some other issues. During the last statutory meeting, the mayor, Patricia Chase Green, struck out the no-confidence motion. According to legal advice given to King, if the motion was passed in its present form, it would be improper, incompetent, and of no legal effect. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Arams. Director of Social Services Wentworth Atana, during an interview with News Update, stressed that the Ministry of Social Protection is committed to putting adequate systems in place to help address the societal issue of vagrancy, which is a serious reality observed across parts of the country. Lashana Gomes Cornelius filed this report. 
While the societal issue of vagrancy continues to be a major concern for the Ministry of Social Protection to actively address, Director of Social Services Wentworth Tana explains that the issue is also the responsibility of the Ministry of Public Health. Tana pointed to the fact that many persons who are living on the streets for a variety of reasons mostly have ill health, weakened psychological state of mind and are impoverished. In fact, most of the, um, the research has shown that most of the persons who we have on the streets who are homeless, uh, those persons either have a substance abuse um, challenge or they are mentally ill. Uh, for both issues, uh, the primary agency would be the Ministry of Public Health. Um, of course, it's not only the Ministry of Public Health, it's a collaborative effort. But those are things that, um, that we are working to try to address also. Um, of course, there are some um, technical skills that are needed. Uh, we need, you need, of course, psychiatrists and so forth to be able to work with those persons. So that, as I said, it's um, the primary agency is the Ministry of Public Health, but uh, they work in collaboration with um, the Ministry of Social Protection also. Okay. In finding appropriate and direct solutions to help curb the issue at its core, Tana explained the task is not as easy as it sounds. He stressed that it would take countless efforts from both the government and the private sector in formulating the best approach necessary for the implementation of programs and systems to deal with the social problem. Um, but there, there is a task force that has been set up uh, through the Ministry of Public Infrastructure that is looking at addressing that. Uh, but as it pertains to our elderly um, citizens, um, provided that the Ministry of Social Protection gets a report that an elderly person is homeless and they're on the streets, we um, contact the, the PAMS facility. Uh, we have a vehicle there that will go pick them up, uh, bring them in, make sure that they get a medical, and then we will uh, try to contact relatives if possible. If, there's no, if there are no relatives who are either available or are willing to um, accept responsibility, the Ministry of Social Protection will usually house those persons at the Palms Geriatric Facility. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes Cornelius. When we return, Ghana to host the 34th Congress of the Organization of American States. much windex for clean windows all them fancy curtains it's not even christmas hi girl mind your own business i got big plans but bb your house don't even have windows hey uh, girl you ain't think i know it ain't got window yes i know it ain't got window but look mokesh promised me that he carried me down by the window factory when he come home and Eccles, it named Beeson, like you know nothing, girl. Right now, everybody talking about how Beeson got the strongest windows. Plus, they got a deal right now. If you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. So I could mind new business instead of you minding me own. Beeson Windows and Doors, serving Guyana with the highest quality standard windows for your home, office, or commercial building. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Are you building or renovating? Then Gaffers is the place to shop for all your construction needs. Our flat pack department has a wide range of doors, including wooden doors in pine, purple heart, crabwood, bifold, arch, full and half French, fiberglass garage doors, and Mexin steel doors. Our Mexin doors are durable, and they're available in a wide range of designs. For safety, our doors include 12 locks, viewers, buzzers, and frames. For your kitchen, we have a wide range of elegant and durable quartz, granite and laminated countertops, and cabinet doors. You'll find laminated, bamboo, and PVC flooring to suit your style and decor while upgrading the entire look and feel of any room. Then choose from our wide selection of PVC ceiling panels, ceiling tiles, moldings and rosettes. Also built in our flat pack department is sheeting for interior and exterior use such as plywood, gypsum board, cement board and MDF board. So come on down to Gafu's flat pack department for your construction and finishing needs and Miss Camlo will assist you to select products for your total satisfaction. Gafu's, the name you can trust. 
Long time no for them stay. Guyana, Sunday March 18, National Park. It's Nick Shine Ride. Shine Ride. Showdown of Guyana hottest cars, minibuses, and SUVs. Over one million dollars in cash and prizes. And there is the Mr. Guyana Big Bike Stunts Contest. One thousand US dollars. Everyone is talking about boys bicycle rally for gifts. Tons of fun for the kids. Music by Slinger's family. For information, call WhatsApp six zero three five six one seven. Guyana's biggest car and bike show. Sunday, eighteen to March. National Park, Nick, Nick Shine Ride. Ride. Compliments of GTG Blaze, Stag, and Man's Bear. This is MTV News Update. Oh, thank you for staying tuned. For the first time since its establishment, Guyana will be hosting the 34th Congress of the Organization of American States. Lashana Gomes can you list with the details. Earlier on Friday at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, OAS Conference Specialist Luis Gombra met with ministry representatives to discuss what is expected during the Congress. According to National Coordinator, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Donald Sinclair, the two-day event is slated for March 21 and 22 at the Marriott Hotel. It is being held under the theme Connecting the Americas Through Sustainable Tourism. Sinclair explained that every effort on the part of the Ministries of Tourism and Foreign Affairs is being made to ensure that protocols are put in place to provide all visiting delegates from OAS member states have the safest, most reliable and memorable experience in Guyana. The matter of connectivity within the Americas is important and we feel that it is an important dynamic to grapple with and to address. If tourism in the Americas is to be the kind of sector, the kind of industry that we want it to be, that is why several airlines have been attracted to this uh, Congress. Who are the persons coming? You know the name is, it's a meeting of ministers and high-level authorities. We have ministers of tourism, vice ministers of tourism, persons in charge of tourism authorities in the region. We have persons in charge of the private sector entities in, 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 in tourism, and also CEOs of other industries and heads of NGOs. So it's a very high level Congress and the focus is, as the theme says, connecting the Americas through sustainable tourism. Being on his first official visit to Guyana, conference specialist Luis Gombra, during his brief remarks, expounded on Guyana's many aspects of beauty as a tourism destination the world needs to know about. Gombra explained that one of the main subjects that will be readily discussed at the two-day Congress is that of the creation of a common standard. Gombra illustrated while Guyana has shown much commitment in having its tourism industry developed, Guyana, like other countries of the Americas, has to do better in grabbing hold of all necessary measures to attract more tourists. The country has been working in a way that is ready at this moment to receive uh, heads of delegation of all the countries of the Americas to discuss this issue that it is a multilateral issue. Nobody can do tourism by its own. No country can solve the, the, the tourism questions uh, by its own. We all need to be connected, uh, not only because the problems are common, but also because uh, each country can offer complementary things. And in a sense that we are stronger if you have common standards for tourism. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. One Trinidadian company is seeking to set a high bar for health and safety in extractive industry. The company today officially opened its doors to the Guyanese public. Find out more in this Nikhil John report. Managing Director of Chronicle Safety Solutions, Daryl Jilks, during an interview says they are offering various opportunities to the locals. Jilks noted that a study was conducted last year to ascertain what the needs of Guyanese are, so they have established a local branch. He noted that the company is offering quality safety gears, which is required in the extractive industry. While the company is focusing on the upcoming oil and gas sector, 
they have opened the way for safety training in all the sectors of Guyana. The standards, the global standards for safety are pretty high. Um, me coming from Trinidad, we have adjusted ourselves since, to some degree um, to that safety culture. And considering the case of Guyana's um, newfound um, oil reserve, um, it's an opportunity for Guyana to, in other words, raise that bar. We want to help do that because we understand safety is crucial. Um, safety involves saving lives. Um, if you have the wrong product, you have the wrong training, it could be your life. I remember um, I have a colleague, his thing was, um, reach back home how you left. Shouldn't have one arm less or one leg less. And that kind of stayed with me because we understand that safety is not a job, it's a way of life. And we have to um, inculcate that into ourselves. A simple thing as holding a hand railing helps us to be safe. The managing director also noted that they have been advocating for the use of a particular footwear. Jokes stated that they have had positive feedback from the business community for the use of these protective gears in the workforce. They have told us that they were struggling with their employees. So it's not a matter that they don't provide the material or the, the resources, but to encourage the person to use it is difficult. That, that's basically the thing we got from many persons, that difficulty in getting the awareness, people to understand, I need to have proper safety boots. I can't go barefoot, I can't use the slippers, I need proper quality safety boots. The company also offers health, safety and environmental training, which involves working from heights and confined spaces. Chronicle Safety Solutions will also be hosting a safety awareness training seminar for locals in April. An open house exhibition was hosted today at the company's office located at 48 Sheriff Street. There, persons were able to find out for themselves what solutions they can choose to fit their business ventures. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Two separate families that had experienced the recent devastating Pike Street fire on Wednesday, March 7, earlier today, received several mattresses and pillows from popular furniture giant Kisun's Furniture Mega Store located at Industrial Site Rheinfeld. Tashana Gomes Kinidis has more. Sales manager of Kisun's Furniture, Christina Danisha, explained what the purpose behind a furniture company's drive is in stepping up to the plate and showing support to several families that lost almost everything in the fire. Actually, um, our company is committed to, you know, um, give back to our community. So I feel that this is a very good opportunity to give back to persons who, you know, really need it. And it's so unfortunate that these families have lost almost everything that they've worked so hard for. So we're very happy that we can be able to, you know, help in some way. And I hope that others, you know, will see and they really need help. And um, I hope that others will see and come forward to help these families because, yeah, they really do need it. Marlon Tarman, a father of three, while recounting his losses during the fire, expressed his gratitude at being one of the recipients of three mattresses for his children. The man explained as he tries to rebuild his life, especially for the sake of his children, all of whom are still in school, the truth is being a man of faith is what continues to keep him grounded. Whoever willing to come forward and give us the help so that they could get for balance at least with my transportation wise and get the shops so that I could maintain the children on a daily basis because every day they got to get money for transportation to and forth. Then they got to get money weekly. I a man used to bring in everything. I like the breadwinner for me family. Because the mother is housewife and I, she don't really work. So I just do all the little selling at the shop and with the transport for cry them to and forth. Just hoping for the best, trusting God when you can't trace Him. And I put all my confidence in God that everything going to be all right. Me fretting, me rowing, but I serve God in spirit and in truth. So I need not to worry until when some assistant come in and say, well, this is where you might need or, you know, to keep you a little more uplifted, you know. I said thank you anyway and whoever willing to help could come forward 
My number is 601-2551. Angela Dominique, a mother of three children, revealed when she first got the news that her family would be the beneficiaries of three new mattresses, she could not have been more pleased. I must say, first of all, thanks to Mr. Kesun and staff. When I came now and I see, I felt very happy about it. And I know that my children would be able to sleep a little comfortable, but not so deep. Because, you know, we all sleep like cat these days. But I'm grateful. I must say thank you. But I can't take it on like this all the time. I'm just asking God to give me the strength because my children, they're taking on this thing all the time. And every day they're talking about it. So I'm just taking it easy and trusting God to get things over with the little materials and so on, so we can. I already have persons to help me to put back the place together. But you know, we're just trying to get all little pieces of stuff, like a little zinc and so on, because the roof got to do over on these things. For both families like others who had lost everything in the fire, efforts to recreate a life and a home of comfort and happiness will take some time. But all hope is not lost. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes Cornelius. Still ahead, International Children Outreach repaints David Rose's special school. Stay tuned. Introducing a new brand of all weather fiberglass rocking chairs for complete relaxation. We supply quality, durable, and low maintenance indoor and outdoor table and chairs for your patio, restaurants, cafeteria, reception area, and much more. So sit back and enjoy quality products from Fibertech with guaranteed factory warranty. It's John Lewis Styles. Buy one, get one at half price sale. Buy any t shirt, top, polo shirt, dress, pantsuit, or skirt suit, and get the second one at 50% off. Same goes for shoes, handbags, and lingerie at half price. Hurry because John Lewis Styles half price sale ends soon. It's John Lewis Styles. Buy one, get one at half price sale. Buy any t shirt, top, polo shirt, dress, pantsuit, or skirt suit, and get the second one at 50% off. Same goes for shoes, handbags, and lingerie at half price. Hurry because John Lewis Styles half price sale ends soon. Introducing the new Softex toilet tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle, soft to, and every gentle touch. to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The, the choice, choice is clear. clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. You're tuned to News Update. Welcome back. The chief administrator of City Hall, Royston King, has declared the Borders Market as the pilot for the upcoming projects that the council has planned. However, the vendors are already complaining about the way the council is initiating that process. Here is more. During a visit to Border Market, Tom Clark Royston King said the market will be a pilot in which revenue booths will be established. King stated consultations with vendors have begun. The idea is that we are using a different approach to collect revenues from our markets so that we can facilitate a greater level of transparency and accountability. We are in the process of marking the road so that we are able to measure properly spaces, dimension of spaces, the costs and so we'll be able to calculate and account properly for all revenues coming in from our markets. However, we're using border market as a pilot, after which once we've tested the strengths and the weaknesses of this system, we will then replicate the system in other markets like the Starbrook market, or Stone market, and East Rheinfeld market. Meanwhile, vendors along Robb Street between Alexander and Border Streets have complained that no consultation has been held before the council marked off areas for stalls. President of the Guyana Market Vendors Union, Ian Andrews, relayed the grouse of the vendors. There have been some problems where the people in the green were complaining about the competition they're having during the day 
when in fact they sell in, they are in there and at four they would leave, which means that the evening sellers are to come out just around the time so that they could catch persons leaving war. But what the members along this road indicated to me is that they confirmed to the five o'clock or four o'clock coming out, but there are people who would come here and sell. They are not evening sellers. And they hold, instead of dropping off, they spend the whole day. So by the time afternoon comes, when they come, these people who would have been selling whole day already take up the sales that they would have. So they're losing. Then they come and they mark off here. So what happens is that people produce falling into the drain. You would see where they have it at the end of the drain. Instead of having the space, now they have to be this way instead of that way. According to the Public Relations Officer of the Council, Deborah Lewis, the vendors will sell from 7.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. The Pacarima Mountain Safari Club and Rainforest Tours, in collaboration with the Guyana Tourism Authority, will host its 16th annual Pacarima Mountain Safari starting March 25 through April 1. Here is more in the Skippany Jordan Report. The Pacarima Safari Club and Rainforest Tours, in collaboration with the Guyana Tourism Authority, will host its 16th annual Pacarima Mountain Safari starting March 25 through April 1. Coordinator of the safari, Frank Singh, said that up to 25 persons with vehicles will be participating in the safari. The reason for this is that they have um, brand one of the villages, Tusinin village, which will be the, the, uh, what's called the heritage village for the safari. So we have some changes in the safari that we will be overnighting in Tusinin village. So. The people that involve in the safari will have a more direct uh, interaction with the villagers and they will get to understand the cuisine and the culture. Senior Marketing Officer at the Guyana Tourism Authority, Anari Sicharan, promises that this safari will afford participants an exhilarating experience. Um, a highlight of the safari um, is for participants to experience the diverse landscape of Guyana, the rugged mountains, the um, rolling savannas and the lush rainforests and it gives participants also the opportunity to experience the indigenous way of life, nature and adventure as well as to have a camping experience in the rugged outdoors which is part of the local tourism product. We want to encourage the safarians as well, I know they have done this in the past but we want to still encourage them to support local culture, to support local initiatives and when they visit the village to support um, the arts and craft, to support if there is food on sale, the services that are being offered by the indigenous communities, because they benefit when they are on the safari. Minister within the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Valerie Garida Lowe, pitched the suggestion of having a project incorporated in the safari for next year's initiative. Other than that, I would like to make a, a suggestion, um, seeing that there's so many days I think it's 10 days or 8 days. 8 days, totally. If you can um, next consider one day for a project within the community. Let's say if you have a small bridge to build, you know, um, you need to build a bridge somewhere at, at a crossing. What we can do as a ministry, we can, we can, um, you know, let them know before how they can help, and when you come, you can put in the rest of help. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. As part of their dedication of restoring joy in the lives of those facing poverty, the International Children Outreach, based in Florida, USA, visited the David Rose Special School. Here are the details from Sandy Ramatar. The David Rose Special School were treated with a visit from the International Children Outreach, ICO, an organization based in Florida, USA. Children there were treated to an interactive session, games, and there was even the beautifying and decorating of the interior of the building. The charitable organization is dedicated to restoring joy in the lives of children facing poverty. 
Okay, well, some of the work we do is provide uh, clothing, educational supplies, to kids. We would do deal deal with healthcare and yeah, anything that has to do with the kids that deserve something more than what they have. Um, what we've been doing at David Rose School is we've been helping out the teachers. We've been playing with the kids, like showing them, like. Different activities we've been doing with them. We've been playing cricket. We've been playing basketball. Some of these kids just need somebody there, like to be a role model for them. All here at David Rose, we are also painting the walls and redecorating and beautifying the whole entire building. So. Walls behind us actually are painted right now as well. We did the flooring outside by the breezeway on over there. Founded by Againis, the organization focuses mainly on health, youth development, and community service. The group of volunteers who were delighted to visit the institution shared their experience reaching out to the underprivileged children. And being here and being with the children with disabilities is truly a blessing because we come from somewhere where we are very privileged and we need to, you know, do our best to help out other people. And it's just such a good feeling and it's overwhelming and all the love that we get here is just great and I love it and I would do it all the time. So coming from Kenya, where I was born, I have seen um, how it is, how people live live um, differently over there and um, it just it really means a lot to me that I can give back. Um, it's life-changing experience. I've always wanted to travel outside and I've been in other countries. I'm from Syria originally so I always wanted to go to South America and even Africa and see like help out third world countries. So just being with these kids is like something I always wanted to do and it's it's really rewarding. Um, since like they're not used to uh, people like us, you know, it's something that they, that they want to learn from us a lot faster. And whatever we do, they it sticks to them. Like they remember what we, we what we did here, and they keep on like trying to mention. So like we're trying to like have have it as we come back every um, every so often to help the school even grow bigger. Um, being at David Rose, I will say it's been a changing experience. I've never actually dealt with disabled children before in my life. And it's my first time, so it was a really big challenge at the end of the day. But I feel like I've grown a lot as a person. Seeing these kids and seeing what they have to go through all the time, it's, it's intense. And I, it gives me a better perspective of what people around the country, people around the world go through as well, too. The ICO is now stationed in Guyana through their Education and Wellness Community Center in Craig on the east bank of Demerara. The center includes classrooms, medical examination rooms, a library, media tech room, therapeutic room, and a community garden. The ICO is expected to support Jamaica, India, Puerto Rico and Africa in the same way as part of the 2013-2018 agenda. Sandy Ramotar for MTV's News Update. Stay tuned for Court Roundup of the Guyana Stock Exchange as well as the Demerara Harbour Bridge schedule. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. <gasps> this is amazing. I love your tiles. Make an impression with the finest tiles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various tiles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our tiles are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in towns. Lens, our product, your creation. This is what went down at the Georgian Magistrates Courts on March 16. A 36-year-old Mason was on Friday remanded to prison for drug trafficking. Devon Adams of Charlestown appeared before Magistrate Leron Daly and denied the charge. 
Particulars of the offense alleged that, on March 14, at Cummins Park, Georgetown, he had 2.5 kilograms of cannabis in his possession for the purpose of trafficking. Adams' lawyer, during an application for bail, told the court that the drug was not found in his client's possession. Meanwhile, the police prosecutor, during his objection to bail, told the court that the defendant gave a caution statement to the police claiming ownership of the drug. The magistrate refused Adam's bail and adjourned the matter until April 3. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. The Guyana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading section 764. Let's turn our attention to the Demer Harbor Bridge schedule. Your weekly entertainment guide is next to stay with us. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens. Available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. song for the broken hearted Good evening and welcome to MTV News Update Entertainment Guide. We begin with Nick Shine Ride Karen Bike Show that's all set for this Sunday at the National Park. Franklin go ahead and tell us about this competition. Um Nick Shinewright happens to be this Sunday at the National Park, the 18th of March. Um, it's the best of the best putting together um, of all the, the recent car and bike shows that we had in the Guyana. This one is totally different because we deal with only with the champions. And um, they're going to only be one winner. In every category, there's going to be only be one winner. There's 26 categories. Um, there's, um, there's the Boys Bicycle Rally. And of course, there's the, um, my favorite, Mr. Guyana Big Bike Stunts. This Sunday at the National Park, Nick Shinewright. This big bike stunt is a separate competition to the car and bike net TV show? Yes, it's different, it's different and it's a first of its kind held in Guyana. Um, we have the likes like Ben Stone from Ben Street, we got the likes like um, Smalley, Wild Boy from the West Side, uh, we got Wild Buck, we got a whole heap of them who do, does this thing. But the place to prove your point, the, pr the place to prove who you are is Mr. Guyana Big Bike Stunt. For one thousand US dollars is a national park this Sunday, the 18th of March, Nick Shine Ride. Nick Shine Ride, a showdown of Guyana hottest cars, minibuses and SUVs. Show. Okay, the car and bike show, it's wonderful. The car and bike show, um, I am excited about the car and bike show. We've got a full pack team. I'm talking about these persons are from West Coast, Bartica, Burbies, East Coast. What is the price of the Okay, the prices are trophies and cash and along with gifts. Okay, entertainment will be provided by um, Bill Crosby, is in Guyana presently still um, enjoying the life. Um, Slinger's Family Guyana Moon Song System, Selective Face, and of course, Expected Dances. This Sunday, gates open at 4 o'clock. Be part until everything is finished. And as we continue with the entertainment guide, Strike the Musical is all set for tomorrow night right here at National Cultural Center. Guys, go ahead and tell us everything about it. 
Well, this show is all kids. The kids run the set, they run the props, they do all the acting and the singing. Um, it's all students from the Georgetown International Academy between the ages of 5 and 18. Um, and they've been working on all this for about three months, so it's been weeks and weeks of hard work, and they've done a great job so far. No! And lucky you, you're here at Torture Time, bringing the cooking. Well, I think the GIA, the Georgetown International Academy, they've over the years they've sort of built up this reputation for putting forward uh, really well-developed, well-produced, uh, high-value plays, and this one is going to be no different. Uh, the kids, there are over 70 of them in this production, and they've all worked really, really hard to to bring this play forward. There is music, there is dancing, uh, everything has been done by the kids, and they're so excited to to show the world what they've been rehearsing for for over the past three months. It's, it's going to be amazing. I'm not a king because you're not a king. Oh, but I will be. Just as soon as I find a princess to marry. I hear you know of one. Can you elaborate a little on his scenes in this play? Sure. Um, so with the set pieces and everything that's come together, they've brought to life the ogres, so Shrek and Fiona, and they've brought together Duloc scene, which you can see behind me right now we have the red, yellow, and blue of Duloc in the castle. Um, they've, we've tried to bring everything from the original movie to life. And finally, on the entertainment guide, it's Woman in Love Part 2 comedy show. That's all set for March 23rd to 25 at the National Cultural Center. I caught up with the director along with some cast members, and they told us about this event. Well, the name, I think, uh, is self-explanatory. Woman in Law 2, Trapped in the Closet, which is subtitled, um, is self-explanatory. We have two women uh, and a man, and we have lots of twists, turns, and uh, plot turns, and, and twists, and different elements to the play that will leave everybody in awe and shock and, and, and complete. Um, it's a belly full of laughter. I can guarantee that. Dance, Johnny, strap it for me with those warnings. Well, the name speaks for itself. It's just that it's added comedy, added fun, added characters. So it's more explosive comedy because now it's two. And you see, trapped in the closet behind us, woman in love part two. That's it. Well, I am Diamond, the woman in law. Well, I am Di Diane, the woman. <laughs> I'm the fiancé of the man that everybody wants, so the eligible bachelor. Mm -hmm. Sonia, mm -hmm. veteran actress, there's lots of other events slated for next weekend as well. Why should patrons come support you guys? Because you can come and see a piece of you on stage. You're either the woman-in-law or the side chick or the woman or the man. So why not bring along the or side chick? The hooker, that is exactly. <laughs> So you just bring along and you get to see a few tips on how to deal with it or how not to deal with it. You know, get some things from Precious Angel, who is Clemencia Goddard, you know, and see how you can deal with this whole situation if you're faced with it. So just sit next to, you know, the man in the middle, then the side chick at the end, and then the woman at the next end, and your friend. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we have for you in this week's edition of the Entertainment Guide. As always, I'm Roger Schlack, and I encourage you to have fun and be safe. Uh, that's all we have for in our newscast tonight, but before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. Family of Kwame Asana does not believe the police's version of the seawall shooting. Opposition blasts government for not establishing the Sovereign Wealth Fund as yet. GWI condemns attack on its employees by aggressive Buxtonian. And in court, a man denied bail after allegedly being caught trafficking cannabis. The newscast can be viewed online on MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be rebroadcasted later tonight at 23 hours and at 6 hours 30 on Saturday, March 17. Do have an enjoyable weekend. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I am Ashley Scotland, thanking you for watching. Good night.
Tired of going around to different supermarkets to pick up multiple items? Then just visit J. Singh & Sons Supercenter to pick up everything you need all at once. We supply groceries, household items, confectionaries, clothing, bags, shoes, cosmetics, children's items, and much more. We're located at Lot 1B, La Reasonable Maikoni. We're open every day from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Contact us on telephone number 221-2487. Check out Naz Halal Restaurant for a wide variety of specially prepared home-cooked meals every day. We specialize in chicken curry, fish curry, cook-up, fried rice, dal, seven curry, fried fish, dal puri, roti, and we also do catering for any occasion. We're open every day from 7 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. We're located at Lot 1 Helena No. 1 Mahaika, telephone number 228-5144 or 654-8852. Sri Guru Raghavendra, world famous astrologer Master Veera Badra, now in Guyana. Specialized in palm, face, patra reading, and horoscope. An expert in clearing negativity in your life by using Asian method prayers. Gives solutions for financial matters, jobs, love, education, etc. Meet him once to get guidance. All matters are private and confidential. Contact him at the telephone. 695-9805-652-6427. All religions are welcome. Guy America proudly introduces its new line of outdoor and garden furniture. Rounded, square and rectangular tables customized with fixed and folding chairs with and without arms. Rocking chairs with footrest. Sun lounger chairs for beaches and pools. Benches, bar chairs and tables and a variety of outdoor furniture. Yes, it's our new line of furniture. Prices are affordable in wholesale and retail quantities. At Guy America, we cater for both local and foreign exports. Call us on 225-7441 at our Mandela Avenue branch, 277-0589 at our Super Center in Zeeburg, or 260-4753 at our Parika store. 